look at how brands across sectors are leveraging email automation to send personalized product recommendations, reduce churn, and even get profile data, right? So I'm going to be joined by Vibov, the growth leader here at mailmore.com. Uh, a little bit insight on Vibov. Vibov comes with over six years of experience in being a solution consultant. He's been helping you know fintech companies and marketing companies adapt the right technologies, design strategies, and also understand what's the best way to go about to achieve an outcome. So Vibov, thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Thomas. Hey, hey, thank you so much for joining us, Vibov. Yes. Hi, Thomas. Uh, I think great sessions by Laurie and Christy. I mean, you know, I learned a lot. I hope the audience did too. Uh, pretty excited about our session now. Uh, shall we start? Let's get, let's get into it, yeah. Yeah, sharing my screen. Let me know once the screen is visible. All right. I mean, you know, we, we did hear a lot about, you know, how to go about automations, right? How to turn those subscribers into, you know, customers, right? What is the right way to segment? What is the right way to design? What is the right way? Uh, you know, what to, you know, how to reach out to these users? What is the right time, etc. Right? So now what we are going to be covering today is we will go industry by industry, right? Some of uh, the great uh, automations, right? Basic automations, uh, so some some complex automations that industries go through. What I would also be covering is, you know, some examples, right? That I have personally seen, uh, you know, showing great results, right? So for example, starting with an e-commerce store, because, you know, we've mentioned e-commerce stores quite a bit. Now, uh, these are some of the series automations flows that I have seen, right? Welcome series, the most important. And, you know, uh, trust me, this welcome series, you will see it on every industry on my slide at least and across industries, right? Product recommendations, browse abandonment, uh, abandoned cart, product refills, right? All of that. Now, you know, Christy mentioned a great point, right? Knowing your customers is very important to the question you ask, you know, what kind of data points we should be collecting, right? So yeah. I, I have a great example of that, right? So, you know, an e-commerce brand, one of the very large e-commerce brands, uh, you know, we did a campaign where they segmented the users to be specific, you know, these are people who are viewing the product, means active customers, mm -hmm. but are not purchasing, right? So you have their email ID, but you don't know anything about them. They haven't they haven't purchased from you ever, right? So mm -hmm. what they did, uh, it is an interesting campaign. They ran a Zodiac style up. They said, okay, hey, do you want us to style you based on your Zodiac, right? One, it is relatable. Zodiac, everybody wants, you know, it's there out there, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they, still, they collected the Zodiac signs, but the main goal was to collect the date of birth of the user. Right. They collected the date of birth based on that, personalize the content, right? Which is, for example, if you select Pisces, you get the, you know, coupon code, which is 15% off in this case for Pisces. Great personalization. You, uh, they personalize the products as well, uh, you know, for those Zodiac and also generated date of birth, the customer profiling data. That's gold yeah. for any marketer, right? They're already planning a birthday campaign, right? Which is, I mean, Again, right, a gold uh, data to for any marketer to connect, right? That's on the e-commerce store, right? Now, coming to the fintechs, right, where, you know, again, like I said, right, welcome series is something that's, you know, you cannot, you know, miss, you know, if you're a marketer, right? Now, again, you know, there are multiple, you know, flows that somebody can go through, welcome series, event registration, Christy spoke about event registration, post-event nurture, right? Doesn't matter if they joined or not, right? If they showed interest, they're a potential lead or a potential customer, potential prospect for you, right? Definitely reach out. Again, personalize saying, hey, we saw that you didn't, you know, uh, attend the event. That personalization, that messaging is required, right? Uh, one size does not fit all, right? User engagement. Engage your users with, now, for example, some great flows that I see is, you know, every fintech tries to have some sort of calculators on their website. Right now, reaching out to those users, which attracts most of the audience. Now, reaching out to the users about those calculators, engage those users with those calculators, tell them what they're gonna, you know, get out of this. That's that's the key, right? Browse cart abandonments, payment reminders, right? Lead magnets, another very good way to, you know, fill up the top of the funnel, right? Now, if you've gotten the, you know, a lead to kind of attract towards the brand, what whatever that you're trying to sell it is very important to nudge them at the right time with the right messaging to, you know, push them down the funnel, 
right? So these are some of the examples, you know, that we have seen. Yeah. Any yeah, questions? Thomas? This gives good. Yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, I was pretty curious, and my, my mind is obviously still on the previous slide, which is the e-commerce one. But it goes back to the point of, you know, being able to capture as much data as you can, right? Because yes. for segmentation, you do need to catch as much data as you can around your customers, right? Uh, uh, and that exactly. will kind of attribute to personalization also, because with that, right. you can then personalize a lot more. I, I think, I mean, this is a, 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 you know, a suggestion to every marketer out there. Do not just personalize only based on name or demography. It's a whole lot more than just that. Right, you can go a lot deeper, get a lot more relevant information. But yeah, I mean, this is pretty cool. I mean, I'm excited to see what's ahead. Yeah, I mean, you know, doubling down on that, right? It is, you know, personalizing just by the name is, you know, too old school now. Everybody has done that. It's yeah. done and tested, right? <laughs> now, knowing your customer, like Christy mentioned, you know, profiling your customers, getting the relevant information, and knowing, you know, what will make them, you know, buy the product, uh, is something that is very important for a marketer. You know that you're good. Do that qualitative analysis on your customers, right? Now, uh, again, an example of this, which is a, another great example and a problem that I have seen, you know, you know customers across industries, right? Mm. It is very prominent in the fintech, right? Apps are installs, right? Again, you know, people want to get the feedback, but there is no channel, right? There's no mode, right? People try to reach out to call to people, uh, but people are not always available. The users are not always available, right? So one such campaign that we did with another fintech brand using mail modo was uh, we had co started collecting events right as soon as somebody somebody is uninstalling the app right we were sending them a campaign uh, you know and thanks to interactivity here uh, using amp where you know we were asking them that hey you know sad to see you go but you know if you face any problem which made you uninstall the app tell us we will resolve it for you right and people were able, able to give the feedback right there and you know click on resolve it right what does what happens next now this customer primarily wanted these triggers, right? These feedbacks to go to Slack okay. so that, you know, their support teams can pick it up, right? That's where the support team came into the picture, started calling the people and, you know, they were able to, to my surprise, and I was also stunned when I saw this, uh, around 12,000 people had, un you know, uninstalled the app. Out of them, with one single campaign, uh, you know, with a few follow-ups, of course, uh, we were able to generate 342 reinstalls, which is 2%, 2.8% wow. win back rate. It is, you know, it is unheard of, uh, you know, in the market, especially driven through emails, right? There yeah. are other ways, but for an email campaign to, you know, get a 2.8% win back campaign, it was unheard of. True, right? true. This so is that's, crazy. I mean, I, I yeah. can see the, the blend of how you, you know, how we are integrating emails with uh, Slack and then, you know, aiding that support team to, you know, get context and immediately reach out to them, which obviously the results speak for itself. But, you know, it's 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 a perfect blend of having every channel working to go towards a central goal, right? Rather than deciding, yeah. hey, you know what, I'm only choose one channel over the other. Right? I think yeah. the combination of using all channels together is the key to, you know, getting really good results here. But this is very interesting. I mean, a 2.8, almost 3% win back rate is pretty impressive. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, this is the thing about automations, right? Automations is not just, you know, uh, you know, if somebody has opened the email, you know, send this campaign, right? But also to, you know, kind of understand your funnel and see where the leakages mm -hmm. are. If you can kind of stick a tape on those leakages, uh, you know, you will see you know, conversions happening, you will see revenue coming in. And that's where, you know, you should nudge the users, you know, on emails and other channels as well, I would, you know, recommend. Perfect. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you know, these are the two kind of top industries. Now, you know, being a SaaS player, uh, you know, and just knowing a lot of marketers in the SaaS world, uh, you know, another kind of problems that we see is, you know, when onboarding, right, user onboarding. Uh, where you know people drop off during the KYC, uh, people drop off during the setup steps itself, right? I will be talking about how you know that's one of the automations, right? Now in the SaaS world, again, like I mentioned, welcome series very very important, and this this is where I want to speak about why a welcome series is important, Thomas, right? Now, what does welcome series bring on the table? As soon as somebody installs the app, you send them an email telling them, hey, you know, uh, that builds trust with your user and telling them, hey, you can expect emails from me. You can expect communications from me. And these yeah. communications will be useful for you. Right? right. And if you establish that, you know, 
trust with your users and you know you, they kind of know that okay they can expect these emails your other campaigns kind of flow through easy right true, uh, true. so that that's what helps and you know across industry this is something that's true right uh, i think know, one, again, one 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 important point here to kind of remember is also for everyone listening is that you know in the saas industry i've seen this happening where the goals are you know not defined yet for each campaign and what i mean by that is that you know a lot of times your welcome emails and you know you got a sales team also having sales sequences running so the sales sequences cta and you know the marketing email sequences cta are almost same right and you got to avoid overlapping of that right you have to make sure that they're distinct if you're keeping a welcome series on a saas platform let them focus on you know helping your audience or your prospects discover new features right discover new possibilities through your tool explore the tool further and you know let your sales sequences be focused on you know ctas or book a demo connect with me keep those isolated siloed so that you know it's not overlapping each other and you lose the you know the essence of each of those campaigns but i mean that's just something that i've seen happening a lot so i thought i'll plug that over here but yeah over to you uh, absolutely i mean you know another great point that i have seen some marketers uh, you know doing and getting great results out of it is you know analyzing what your flows are doing for you right how do you analyze okay you know how many people got added to that particular workflow uh, you know how many people actually reached till the end of the workflow how many people got churned from there right but another very important uh, you know thing to kind of notice is what is your goal uh, you know for that particular uh, you know workflow now for example post event nurture right for people who you know signed up but you know registered for the event but never turned up right post event yeah. nurture i want or people who actually showed up right now you want to rent, reach out to those people but my end goal is to make them sign up for example on mail mode today right now here that tracking of the goal is very important now all these esps including mail mode of course you can you know track those goals saying you know if you know out of whatever people got added to this workflow my goal was to sign up right now you know as many people sign up you know add a plus one to that and at the end of those 100 200 500 people who were added to that workflows check how many people actually signed up if that's the goal and the goals will differ in industries in uh, you know across cohorts segments etc those goals is something it is very important for any marketer to kind of identify all right and Perfect. and that stands true you know you would see you know these 10 series and you know the marketers will get overwhelmed saying hey you know i don't have so much bandwidth to do or you know reach out to you know do all these 10 flows 15 flows right but the idea is not that right the idea of all of this is you know identify what stage are you at in your you know brand right what are your goals right based on that goals on those goals you know kind of understand what where to prioritize which workflow you know that you're good to go right you will be seeing people flowing down the funnel uh, you know smoothly right and one right. such example uh, of the you know onboarding or the kyc that i told you about was this right uh, where one of my customers during the onboarding phase they were asking a few more questions it is a more detailed onboarding uh, than usual where you know people started the kyc process started the onboarding process but were dropping off at some step right now what they try to do uh, is you know they waited for 6 hours okay you know maybe that person was busy right that delay is very important you know don't get rushy don't get pushy with your users they will get annoyed they will mark you as spam and they will unsubscribe you right wait for it uh, in this case we waited for 6 hours right mm-hmm. we you know through an event we checked that okay has this customer you know completed their onboarding if they have okay great exit the workflow if they haven't right reach out to only you know with only those fields which were not filled earlier right okay uh, just fill those fields let them fill those fields uh, inside the email or get them to click and you know go to a landing page and get those filled you know remove as much resistance as you can for those users to you know finish that kyc and you know that's that was the goal for them right complete you know get them to complete as much KYCs and onboarding as possible, and they were able to generate whopping fourteen percent KYC completions from drop off, right? I and mean, you're making right? it simple and easy for them to fill it up, right? I mean, exactly. uh, that's pretty cool. There, all right. Exactly. So, you know, I'm trying to kind kind of you know highlight the fact that you know there has to be goals for any marketers. You know, don't just you know 
you know, because I am saying that these 15 workflows are important, just go and, you know, uh, do something uh, there, right? It is very important to understand what you're trying to kind of achieve out of this, right? Uh, so that's uh, one of the things that I wanted to bring up. Uh, another, you know, very uh, interesting industry that I've been working with very closely is edtech. Right, uh, mm. you know, problems like you know, people are viewing my product by above, but you know, are not buying. You know, something very similar we see mm. on e commerce, but the, you know, if these ticket sizes are higher, right? You want certain details, and people leaving uh, not buying the course can have multiple reasons for it, right? Uh, you know, maybe yeah. they didn't get the right slots, maybe they, you know, they saw that the price was too high, right? Maybe they're getting mm. a better offer somewhere else, right? For the same course, same kind of syllabus, right? A tech industry mm -hmm. has these challenges, right? Now, yeah. While these are some of the examples I've been talking about earlier as well, uh, you know, we speak about, you know, this is another such customer which, you know, kind of gave great results is, you know, in your product, we, you know, this is something that they were not tracking earlier. In their product, uh, we asked them to kind of start tracking or, you know, collecting events of people browsing through a particular course, right? Now, if you know, a, user a is browsing through course a right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he's there is some intent and you can't just let that intent go low uh, by not reaching out to them by not nudging them and calls are you know not always the great medium right uh so in this case what we try to do is very similar to what we did in the earlier example as well where uh you know we waited for six hours right you know six hours is a placeholder number here but we waited for some time we checked if the purchase is done if the purchase is not done, we sent them, you know, a form that said, you know, hey, we saw that you were viewing this particular product, uh, but you ended up not buying it. Right? Now, what are the reasons for it? You know, mm. so some of the reasons that we listed down was price is high, uh, you know, didn't get the, you know, right slot. I need a demo. I, I don't know what I'm getting into and things like that. And another mm. interesting question that they asked were, would you buy this product? Why would you buy this course if you were to solve this problem for you? Right. And, yeah. you know, for everybody who said yes, which was good 10% of the people, uh, you know, they collected all of this data and then sent it, uh, you know, via a different channel, what we have one of which was the sales team. Right. And now when the sales team started calling them with context saying, hey, you know, you told us that, you know, the price is too high and you would buy if we sold it. Here is a 10% discount. Rather than calling saying, hey, we saw that you viewed the product, uh, you know, why are you not buying it? Yeah, right? yeah. more so context. The sales team has more context, yes. So, you know, like Laurie mentioned, Christy mentioned that, you know, having context on your user's audience is, you know, the most important, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, aspect of anything, right? Any sort of marketing here. Yeah. All right. I mean, this is definitely, I mean, there's a common theme in this, right? And what I see yes. is that, you know, it's, you can use email marketing so much more than just you know shooting out an email and you know as an information newsletter or you know just as a blast right now uh, if you think exactly. it through you could combine it with your sales team you can combine it with your products you can combine it uh, with the revenue goals that you have each quarter and kind of frame it around it right because clearly you've shown us how e-commerce industries can do right uh, yeah. that's definitely an industry which double down on email they see that as success but other industries as well, like SaaS and the you know, fintech space, how they're using emails along with Slack and using aiding that to contribute to the sales team, for example, right? Uh, because sales teams always love more context around the prospect, yes. right? They, they rather go with you know due diligence and context before even calling the customer. So this is great. I mean, it gives us more insights on this. Do we have any examples of what you're going to be showing us or... Yeah, these were some of the examples. Uh, one cool thing that I was just checking out before uh, the event was, you know, what are some of the examples of, for example, I've been speaking a lot about email, welcome email, right? So uh, welcome email can differ based on industries, right? Now, for example, at mail mode, I put one mail mode example, when as soon as somebody signs up, we send them, you know, a welcome email, right? Now, in our welcome email, we try to introduce them to the product, right? Saying, you know, once you've signed up, do this step one, step two, step three, step four. For an e-commerce, that could be different, right? For an e-commerce, mm -hmm. uh, it, it could just be, you know, these. This is what you can, you know, look out for. You know, these are yeah. some some good discounts that you can look out for, right? So, you know, this is one of the examples with Memodo. 
with e-commerce, like I mentioned, right? Now, this is an upsell cross-sell campaign, right? Now, for every e-commerce brand, you would notice that, you know, a user has purchased in the past, but now is idle. They have not bought it again, right? So to nudge the user in the right direction, asking them, you know, hey, this is a new product. So in this example, you know, the customer is saying, in response to many requests, we re restocked our, sh you know, shirts. And while you can currently win, not, but two of them, right? So they're trying to cross sell this, you know, the products that they might have bought in the past. So they're restocking, you know, different shirts that were loved earlier, right? So they're nudging mm -hmm. the user saying, Hey, you liked it before, uh, was out of stock maybe, or you bought it, you might want more, yeah. uh, you know, come shop with us. That's, yep. that's a great way of, you know, kind of a workflow, understanding your users and, you know, giving them the re relevant content. And this, this image here can be different for different users, right? You have to just find the right way to do that. Perfect. Okay. I mean, relevancy is definitely key, right? I mean, every marketer's exactly. goal is that so that the prospect, whenever they think of a product, the first thing they think about is your brand. So right. the only way to do that is be consistent in email marketing, be do segmentation, send out the relevant information. I think this is a great example because if I had checked out this t-shirt earlier and it was not yeah. in stock, I get an email later on saying, hey, you know what? We've restocked it. This is what we've got. I would definitely yeah. at least be inclined towards making a purchase. So this exactly. is great. Good, good example. Yeah. Yeah. Now referrals is another, uh, you know, through emails, especially, right. It's, you know, you think of this as a very cheap slash almost free, uh, kind of user acquisition, right. Where, you know, your loyal customers, which you have built over the years, uh, you know, are referring their friends and families to kind of check out your products. Right. Uh, and this also needs to be in a particular flow, right. That, you know, like Christy mentioned, segmenting your users and knowing which customers are loyal is a key here, right? We know your customers, send them an email, ref, you know, get them to refer their friends, give them an incentive, give their friends an incentive, you're good, right? And this is another problem, you know, uh, at MailModo, you know, we face this sometimes. And, you know, I'm sure every marketer has gotten this question by their leaders saying, you know, people are on the tool, they have purchased the tool, but the product adoption is either concentrated or is not there, right? Now how do you do that? How do you manage that? Right. It is very important to put them again in one of the flows where you, you know, understand where the usage is low, right. Uh, in what part of the product, the usage is low and based on that particular part of the product, you know, shoot them an email with additional resources, right. Mm. Make them, you know, let them know what they're losing out on. What is the, you know, cost of this opportunity that they're losing on. So helping right. them explore so, the tool as such. Exactly. Yes. You know, maybe guides will help, right? Maybe, you know, uh, some case studies will help. This feature help X customer with this. The steps are like this, right? So these are a few of the examples I wanted to kind of uh, bring out uh, because this, these are a few questions that I get, uh, you know, uh, asked a lot by my customers and I'm sure, you know, everybody on the call today, uh, <laughs> you know, would be asked, getting asked these questions, uh, you know, very often by the leaders and the management. All right. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, uh, Vaibhav. That was definitely a fun session. Um, how do people connect with you? And yeah, I mean, I'll let you go ahead with the last one. Yeah. I mean, uh, if somebody wants to connect with me or the team, just scan this QR code and, uh, you know, you will get our calendars there or you can always reach out to me, LinkedIn, on me, uh, to me on LinkedIn as well. All right. Perfect. Thank you so much for joining us, Vaibhav. It was definitely thank fun you, talking to you.